Tampa was ranked as the seventh best metro market for real estate investors from 2021 to 2022. Tampa is also one of the hottest markets in 2022. So with that said, a lot of investors are having a hard time investing in Tampa because of the lack of the knowledge. So in this video, I'm going to go over six of the top areas in Tampa with one bonus area that you should consider for short term rentals and also highlight some of the reasons why Tampa is just a great choice to invest in. So make sure you stick around for the full video. I'm Chris Johnson, your Tampa Bay Realtor and local resource for all things Tampa Bay real estate. So if you're looking to buy, sell or invest in the area, our information is below. Make sure you send us an email give us a call, a text, or even give us a comments below. So what, what makes Tampa such a great market for investors? Well, there's a few reasons. So Tampa is comprised of three counties that make up roughly 3.3 million people. So aside from the large metro, so Tampa is actually going to be on the lower end as far as home prices are concerned when you're going to look at comparable cities such as Denver, Seattle, and Austin. So Tampa's median home prices right now are sitting around $425,000, where those comparable cities, you're looking at them averaging well over $500,000, even in today's market. So investors also love the fact that Florida is a tax-friendly state. So although you're going to need to pay a state franchise tax, your tax burden will be low compared to the other similar states that we discussed because of the Florida's zero individual income tax. So this is why the investors are actually really just running up here into the area, buying up properties into the Tampa Bay area. So let's go ahead and dive into the areas that you should consider when buying a rental property. And I'm going to go ahead and discuss this in the perspective of the actual renter so that you as the investor can visualize these areas and figure out which works for you, depending on who you want to cater to for your own market. So number one, we're going to start with downtown. I feel like every metro area has a great rental market that includes the downtown as a top area. So this is where we will go ahead and start. So downtown is going to be a great area for those that are maybe a first time visitor to the area of Tampa or one who wants to kind of be in the mix of all of the hustle and bustle. So kind of then that centralized location. Downtown is also going to include many restaurants. Uh, it's got great walkability, um, including the Riverwalk area um, and a lot of local bars as well. So outside of all of that, you're also going to have easy access to the Strass Center, which is one of the largest performing arts centers in the entire Southeast with great shows and performances that happen weekly. Um, this is going to draw great crowds from all over the country. Uh, you're also going to be walking distance to the Florida Aquarium, which is going to be one of the largest in the state. You've got Amelie Arena, which is going to be located in downtown as well, which is where the Tampa Bay Lightning hockey team plays. And almost every home game is going to be a sellout. So this is going to draw huge crowds coming in from all over um, the state and the country as well, depending on who the visiting team is. You've also got Curtis Six and Park. Um, there's great shopping um, and even Sparksman's Wharf, which pretty much makes the, ground, the downtown area a great option for rental. Now, one thing to consider and one thing to, worth noting is that downtown condos are mostly going to have short-term rental rules and restrictions. But there are areas on the outskirts of downtown, which I still include as downtown, such as uh, West Riverfront, um, Palmetto Beach, um, Riverside Heights. These are bordering areas of downtown, but I still consider these downtown. You're going to find options here that are single family homes that won't have uh, the restrictions as condos will. So downtown is also going to be one of the more expensive areas to purchase your short term rental in. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. But one of the, the drawback or the key facts about that is the daily rental rate is going to be anywhere between $225 a night all the way up over to $1,000 plus a night, depending on the property. So great return still. Now, secondly, let's go ahead and talk about our next market, which is going to be Ybor City. So Ybor City is going to be a mix of a bustling nightlife and historic charm. Um, so it's going to be uh, one of the more popular areas for visitors to stay in. Now, the nickname Cigar City can be referenced for this area in specific as 
in the past, this is where most of the cigar factories were, uh, were located. Now, many of the popular nightlife venues are going to line the 7th Avenue um, area. Now, folks visiting here are also going to be able to enjoy decent walkability, um, but having a car or even doing a ride share will probably be preferred for the people that are going to be coming into this area. So, um, possibly finding a property that has some type of parking space area is going to be something that you might want to keep in mind. Now the properties here are going to be mostly those charming older bungalows. Um, so this, the best way to maximize your return in this area as an investor in the market is going to make sure that you update these bungalows nicely and have them outfitted properly to the theme of Ebor's history as well. Now the daily rates here in Ebor are going to range anywhere between $90 a night and upwards to $300 plus a night depending on the property again. Next on the list is I have Hyde Park. Um, Hyde Park is going to be located just southwest of downtown Tampa. Um, Hyde Park is going to be kind of that quaint, cozy little area where you can just kind of take a little stroll. Um, it's a little quieter than what you'll see as um, you know the downtown and, and even kind of the, the bustling parts of uh, Ybor City as well. Um, you'll see tree-lined streets, um, nicely manicured lawns. Um, that's pretty much what you're going to see in this area. Um, this area is going to mostly attract younger folks who want to stay here, kind of hang out at a nice little quaint, cozy restaurant. Um, other places that are going to be um, great to market are going to be some of the local uh, bars that you're going to have in the area. Um, so everything from affordable to those pricey cocktail drink prices. Hyde Park will be more of the um, toned down area, like I said, you know, as opposed to Ebor, where Ebor is going to pretty much be more of the, um, uh, the fast paced nightlife. Uh, so go ahead and take some time to actually look at the Hyde Park area, um, kind of admire some of the local architecture that embodies the houses, uh, incorporating, you know, brick and stone and uh, those modern designs as well with, with some large windows. Um, Hyde Park Village is also a great spot in this area, so you'll get more local shopping, eating. Um, there's also uh, sidewalk areas where you can jog. You'll jog. You'll see mostly um, lots of runners and walkers in the area. Just a great area to kind of just relax and take everything in. Um, Hyde Park also has um, great walkability to uh, what's called Bayshore Boulevard, which is going to be a beautiful scenery area. Um, it also has a little walking trail along the Tampa Bay with stunning views of the downtown area. So another great selling point if you're investing in this area um, as a short-term rental. Hyde Park is going to give you a daily rate of roughly $250 a night to upwards of $500 plus a night. Um, if you like this area, so this is going to be um, kind of the bonus that I was talking about. So if you like this, what you're hearing about the Hyde Park area, but the price point of the property might be a little bit outside of your budget, the next best area to Hyde Park is going to be West Tampa. And this area is going to be able to take advantage of everything that I spoke about in Hyde Park because it literally is the neighboring um, area. But you're also going to be close to the Tampa Bay Buccaneer Stadium, so you'll be able to attract visitors coming in for the game, and also West Shore that's going to have a lot of shopping and dining um, restaurants in, in the large International Plaza Mall as well. Uh, the daily rates are going to be a little bit lower in the uh, West Tampa area, but so are the home prices, so you're still going to get a great return on your investment. That was your bonus. So next on the list is what we call the Heights District. So this is going to comprise of Tampa Heights and Seminole Heights. Now, if you want to cater to a more budget-friendly audience and possibly take advantage of maybe more increased bookings, if you're really worried about maximizing your monthly bookings, this is probably going to be your best area. Um, this is Tampa's oldest suburb and has become a very booming area for the past couple of years, not only for investors, but also those who want to plant roots in the city to call it their home. Um, this area is going to have you market things such as being close to Ybor City, downtown, the theme parks, beaches, local bars and restaurants. So it's quite a versatile area with an attractive daily rate which brings in a lot of people. Um, you're also only going to be about 15 to 20 minutes or so away from the airport depending on traffic. Uh, the scenery is going to be mostly of the older bungalows, um, lots of sidewalks, and several parks that maintain around the area. 
Now the neighborhood is also gonna be overall kind of a nice quiet area. So if that's what you're looking for and that's what you wanna to cater to to your guests, then this is gonna be kind of for you. The daily rate here is gonna be anywhere between $150 a night up to $450 plus a night, depending on the area and the home. So this is actually one of my personal favorite areas for uh, an investor standpoint. Now next we're gonna go into North Tampa area. So another budget friendly area for visitors and so if what, this is what you're looking for, again, this will be another great option for you as well as you're most likely gonna get more bookings um, throughout the month. So this area is gonna attract uh, mostly families. So you'll wanna keep in mind um, of the type of property that you're looking for. Um, something that is maybe a two bedroom may limit you a little bit, you know, depending on the size of the family, but you might be able to still get away with a two bedroom if you do a king bed in one of the bedrooms and a two queens or even bunk beds in the second bedroom, just to get creative and the type of home is gonna be um, something that you'll take factor in. Now, the travelers that are gonna be coming into the area are probably gonna be more interested in some of the outdoor adventures. Um, which is going to be home to pretty much everything in North Tampa. So you've got Adventure Island, which is going to be Tampa's most extensive water park. You've got Bush Gardens, which is going to be a great family-friendly um, theme park with rides and safari options. You're also going to have the Museum of Science and Industry, a perfect place to kind of take the kids for the day. Uh, Zoo Tampa as well is located here, which has been featured on Animal Planet, and it's also one of the nation's best zoo. Um, University of Florida, USF, is just minutes to the east and it attracts many visitors um, such as incoming freshmen that are coming from different areas, um, all the sporting events, and everything that comes with all the college events are, are going to be attracted to this area as well. Um, another great thing is you can advertise the fact that you're only going to be 20 minutes from downtown and Ebor, so that area is going to be well within reach as well. The North Tampa area doesn't have as many active short-term rentals either. So if you're kind of worried about competition, this may be something to keep in mind that this may be the option for you. The average rates here you're gonna find are gonna be roughly between $150 a night upwards to about $350 plus a night. And lastly, we're gonna have St. Pete and everything that comes with St. Pete, clear water and the beaches. So of course, this area is mostly gonna speak for itself as being more of the beach town, but one thing to keep in mind is the downtown of St. Pete is quite a bustling area in its own. So Grand Central District is a great hotspot for those that are looking to you know, have a nice brunch on the weekends, uh, maybe a lunch during the week or weekday, uh, our weekend um, dinners or even just going out on the town um, at night and having many options for local bars um, to choose from. They all pretty much line the street between Grand Central District which is Central Avenue and also on uh, the uh, parallel street of uh, 7th Avenue as well. So you're gonna have um, you know a lot of local spots local eateries uh, they have dog park bars um, nightlife entertainment close proximity to the Gulf beaches. Um, everything that makes St. Pete a, a great area to live in is pretty much what you can advertise to your guests as far as investing in the area. So daily rates here are gonna be anywhere between $175 a night upwards to $1,000 plus a night if you're gonna be closer to the water on the Gulf with Gulf views. So I hope this gave you all great insight on what the areas to look into to purchase for either your first or your next short-term rental property. Um, Tampa's just a great city and it attracts so many visitors. And this is why there's just so many reasons why you really should think about investing in this area. Um, if any of these areas come to mind, um, or if there's any other areas that you had in mind that, you're, that interest you, make sure you reach out to us and, uh, because we do specialize with investors in the area as well, and we'll definitely be able to make sure that we guide you along. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for tuning in. Please give this video a like. Make sure you also subscribe to our channel for more weekly videos. And as always, if you're moving to the area, our information is below, so make sure you reach out to us as we'd love to be able to help you.